Hello everybody, happy Monday. Thank you very much for joining me today. So this is the first of the regular streams that I do on Mondays for this year, for 2021. So 2020 is now behind us, it's in the background. I guess that the, the less we say about 2020, the better, perhaps. But anyway, we're here, New Year. So I'm probably going to leave the Adventures with Wine for a little while yet. So we need to get that bit sorted. But I'm bringing back the Adventures with, I'm um, sorry, bringing back the article view of this week in EFJ. So this is where I pick an article and we have a look at it, have a chat. If you've got any questions, you bring them in. And I've also had a bit of an idea about what I want to try. So hint, it may involve a quiz. So it's a bit of fun, a bit of experiment. So watch this space, keep an eye on Twitter, if you're on Twitter, so you can find me on at El Lazal or keep an eye on the NFJ account, so that's at NFJ. So keep an eye on that. And we're going to do something fun very soon. But let's move on to day session. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having a look at the brand new Arrows app. So this is a really handy diagramming, dio, diagramming tool, which originally Alistair Jones put together. So this is the tool that people see and they go, oh, give me a link to that tool. So that has had a refresh. So this is something that Alistair Jones and Irfan Nuri Karaka have been working on together for, I believe, about a year or so now. Hello, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, this is a tool that they've been working on. So Alistair and Irfan have been working on this, I believe, for about a year or so, the new version, and it's really exciting. So it's now progressed into Near4j Labs, and I thought this is a fantastic opportunity for us to have a look at it and have a play. So let's do a quick go through. So hello, um, Necra, thank you for joining again. If anybody else, you know, pipe in. I'm always keen to find out uh, who else is coming in and having a look. So you've got a question. When's the Cypher workbench coming? I will find out. I don't know. I don't know exactly. So that's to uh, create the imaginable. I will find out. And hopefully next week, when I'm back next week, when we do this again, same time slot, I will hopefully have an answer for you. So I will ask. But Arrows is awesome. Arrows is really good for diagram diagramming things. So we're going to have a play with that in a bit. So let's do a quick before, because we like to do that. Let's do a before shot. So this is what Arrows used to look like, apart from having this handy button here, which I assume is going to do the same thing. And... Um, Barry has put in a very handy link to the article. So you'll also find the same link to this blog post in the description if you're watching on YouTube. So if you're on Twitch, Kevin has very kindly put the blog post in there so you can click on it and have a look at it. So this is what Arrows used to look like. And this was a super powerful tool for pulling together some of your graph based diagrams. So if you wanted to describe what was going on, so you wanted to not together some sample data. This was a super useful tool for this. And uh, I, I use this a lot. I use this as well so for, to like draw out diagrams. For those of you who've been following me with Adventures with Wine, I always revert to this as I draw up a diagram or refactor some model. So I, I use this a lot. When I produce PowerPoint slides, I will use this a lot. Sometimes if I want to knock together quickly some uh, if I want to knock together quickly some data. So if I'm feeling a bit lazy and I know I've got a few nodes and I can't be bothered to write a cipher query, I will use arrows to knock together some data quickly. So this is a really versatile tool. And if some of you have watched my tips and tricks with arrows, I've done some really evil things with arrows where I put in multiple labels and I use it to generate a graph data model and all sorts of things. So this is like, it's a little tool. It's a Super powerful tool. So this is what it used to be. So let's have a quick, for, for old time's sake, let's have a quick look, sort of play around. So I'd click on this, I'd, I'd add a node, and then maybe I'm going to add some details on here. So let's say I'm going to add my label, I'm going to do person, I'm going to put some references on there, it's a name, it's going to be me. And 
let's say, oh, let's make it topical. So let's say I'm going to add, you know, a relationship to another node. So let's say this is going to be a stream, and the title of this stream is uh, This Week in Neo4j Article Review. And let's give this does stream to give it a relationship. We can, maybe we're going to give this a property. So what's today's like? Today's the 18th, isn't it? So 18, oh, let's do ISO, because we like ISO date standard. So 2021-0118. And there we go. So this this is, you know, for, for, for old time sakes, this is what old arrows look like. So this is how we interacted. We could do some stuff. Very little in the way of customization here. So I can't change the colors of things. I can't um, do much. I can move stuff around, but... Oh, excuse me. But customization wise, not a huge number of options. It's still really powerful. I mean, don't simple is good. It was very, very powerful. And I could do this stuff. So I could do this. And if I wanted to click this diagram, I could grab this, you know, do a screenshot. I can sort of download it as an SVG as well. So I've got a number of options I can do with this. I could stick it into a document. I can hand click this handy export cipher button and it will give me the cipher script that I need to create this data. And I guess what I should probably mention very quickly that Arrows actually first arrived as a library. So it was intended to be a diagram diagramming library. And this page was just an example of the implementation about what you could do with it. And it's really, it's a great example of something that has gone away and this has been powerful than the actual library which was you know, sort of originally intended so this is super cool so just bear with me one second sorry about this so this this was the original arrows this this extraordinarily popular works really really well but, 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 but so we told you there is now a new version of arrow so what i'm going to do i'm not going to click the new arrows button because i've got the tab up but what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly shuffle over to the blog post. So Alistair and Irfan, so these are the two people who have been working on this new version of Arrows. So this is their write-up of the tool. And what's really exciting, so we're going to quickly scoot through the blog post. You should see a copy of this link in the description, either on Twitch or on YouTube Live. And again, Kevin did post that link. So if we need to repost that, we can do that. So the really, really exciting thing here, oh, there's so many exciting things. But so you straight away, what you notice is we have a load of customization of things. So straight away, we can do things like changing the colors of our notes. So straight away, we can get a really enriched diagram if that's where we're going. And what I really like, so I've not played with this yet. So this is exciting. I, I've been holding off because I thought, no, no, I'm going to wait until we do the live stream. So we can do this together. So if you want to join in with me, uh, the address is super easy. It's just arrows.app. So arrows.app. So we can all have a go together for the first time. So if you've got any questions or if you get stuck on anything, ping them in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on that and we can go through those. And yeah, let's have a play. So I've been waiting, I've been holding off so that we can all do this together. But what's really, really cool is the fact that if you want to add things, so I love this bit. So this this is all the stuff we could do before. So this is this should all be common ground to all of us because we could do all of this before in the original arrows. But what's really exciting is we have some nice helpers to line things up. So that's really cool. We kind of had that snap on functionality previously with the old arrows, but here it's more explicit. So that's exciting. So that's going to be really nice for getting those beautifully lined up diagrams. And what I like here is that it's going to be easier to add detail. So do you remember, I, ooh, I did per on rather than person. So do you remember the really sort of slightly frustrating thing is that you couldn't press enter. So I've, I've typed some stuff here and I can't press enter. That's changed. So those, those little things that make a huge difference. So 
we can do we can do stuff like that at, at the typing straight away and press enter so that's that saves a huge amount of time and same idea of the relationships again that's such a big time saver the fact that you can uh, double click and type straight away get added so that's gonna be fun so this is used we had this before just slightly different uh, setups that's okay nothing new but the really exciting thing here is I believe we can have more than one label on the node. So we're going to have a play with that in a bit. So we're going to have all sense of fun with that. And we've got properties. So this is slightly different. So I think this is a bit more, um, more user-friendly way of adding these things. Because I guess with here, if we remember, because again, this was supposed to be, you know, originally this was a diagramming tool. That was the intent. So you've got caption and properties. So if you if you don't immediately know that the properties are stored as a key value pair. If you're completely new to arrows, this may be a bit confusing that you have to do this concept of the the key colon and then the and value. So that you know that that looks like to be easier. So and we can only ever put one label before. There was a hack that I used to do to add more than one label in old arrows, but, but I don't think we need to do it anymore. So we are going to have a play with that. And uh, whatever. Fun stuff do we have? The styling. So this this is the big one. So what I used to do, uh, if I wanted something a bit fancier, something a bit prettier, I used to go into PowerPoint and do it myself. And the, the disadvantage with PowerPoint is you have to craft everything. You have to craft where you're going to put the text and the grouping. And then you suddenly have to add a new node. And it's like, oh, pain. I've got to do this again. All of that goes away now. So we've got this multitude way of being able to style and different layouts and the fact that we've got a bloom friendly one so this is super handy if you think about if you're creating a diagram or you're doing something we're talking about bloom so for those of you who've not come across it before near for j bloom is our visualization tool and it uses near natural language so the idea is you don't have to write any graph queries you're not writing any cipher what you can do is you can use near natural language based on the labels that you're using and your relationship types, and you can go away and bring back data. And what's, re, you know, you know, it's aimed at people who perhaps are less technical or are not necessarily wanting to learn cipher. And if you're putting together a diagram or a documentation or something that is accompanying the Bloom experience that you've created, isn't it great that you have a theme so that you can put things together that are in that similar user experience. So lots of great stuff there and browser as well. We love browser. So we've got the different stylings available to us. So we'll have a play with that as well and talks about the different colorings. And we can do things about directionality. So we're gonna have a play with all of this stuff. So again, you can have a copy of Arrows up as well. So we can all play together. And if you've got any questions or get stuck on anything, we can explore those together. Then we've got this download and export. So we had this before. So the difference here is that we can now have a PNG image. So before, if you recall, the options that we had, we could download an SVG. OK, that's fine. We could export the markup side so and just quickly do this. So you could grab this. And I think the idea of this was that you could paste this. If you were using the library, you could use this and, and put this onto a, a web page or something like that. And we can export Cypher. So the, the big key difference here is that we can now do the uh, PGN, which is useful, and SVG. And of course, it this is you know this is targeted at near for j so we can export Cipher as well. So we'll have a little play with that. And there is a handy button uh, to you know run in browser. So I'm not going to be using that. I don't have near for j running yet. If we if I need to get it running, I'll get it up and running. But we have the option as well. Right, okay, I've spent enough time on this. Let's get our hands dirty. So what I should have perhaps done is crowdsource some ideas. So okay, let's give you give you a few few seconds. Anybody have any requests about what we want to have a go at modeling? So it can be anything. It can be, I don't know, the Marvel universe. We can pick wine, you know, here we spend a lot of time on wine. We can do me on Twitch, we can do your favorite TV characters, whatever. So fire it in the chat. If you've got any suggestions, I'll grab one at random and that's what we're gonna have a play with modeling in Arrows. So what have we got? Uh, I've got a question from Jan here.
is everything. Oh, so if I just froze, um, my computer just froze. So I don't know if that stopped the audio going through. So I've got a quick question. So if you've got any suggestions for what you'd like me to model, pick if there's a subject, could be like Marvel Universe, TV shows, um, food, pick a subject, drop it in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to pick one at random. And let's have a look at this question whilst he decides what you'd like me to model in the arrows. So let's have a look at these questions. I've got a question here from Jan. Is this like the new database editor instead of the current one? So I'm not quite sure what you mean. So if you're referring to the, the tool that was popularly used for modeling and diagramming uh, rough, data then yes so this is the sort of the new version of arrows if that's what you mean if that's not quite what you mean Jan drop it in the chat we'll pick it up so um you know please feel free to clarify that okay so Star Wars go right that's it that's it first one the first one through the doors recommendation has been Star Wars so let's do it let's do Star Wars so my husband is a massive, massive Star Wars fan. So he's obviously going to approve of your choice there. He, he's going to have massive approval. Right. OK, so the, the only problem here is my knowledge of Star Wars is a bit limited. So I may have to do some cheeky Googling in the background to um, enhance my knowledge so that we can do it. So let's go with. Oh, how do we how do we want to do this? Well, let's let's do characters and planets. Characters and planets. Let's do that. I think I can. I, I think we can put that together. So we're probably going to have. So if we start with what our data model is going to look like, we're probably going to have a. Oh, so we need to add the captions, don't we? Oh, I remember now. So we add the labels. This is the new the new one. So let's add the label. We're going to press the button. Label. And the label is going to be character. character. And the character is from a planet. So let's add planet. Um, let's do this from well, that was. Okay, that's I like to see. see we we'll see if we can adjust the sizing of that because that's a little bit on the big side, isn't it? Can we make this a bit smaller? Relationship types. Oh, type fonts. So let's make this a bit smaller because we don't need it crazy big. There we go. That's a bit nicer. That's a bit more sane. Okay, so we have a character. Character is from planet. Oh, that's it, isn't it? That, that's our entire day model for this. So that's going to be nice and straightforward. Right, so I'm now just going to sneakily bring up a, a page of the Star Wars universe. So notice how um, flawless this is. So Star Wars characters. And hopefully, oh, look at this. Star Wars characters, planets and vehicles. They, they knew I was coming, so they've, they've come and made it easy for me. So, all right, let's pull this page up. So, I am going to data bank. Oh, characters. Right, over me one moment. I'm going to pick the more well known ones. Oh, I'm going to start with uh, Admiral Akbar, mainly because I've been watching a, not watching, I've been listening to a audiobook called um, We Are Legion, We Are Bob. And anyway, long story short, this uh, character is a replicant and he has a character, like the, the, the thing that looks after his ship, he names... Admiral Akbar. So you got name sticks. So, so we've got a question here. What's the difference between a caption and a label? I think that is a fantastic question. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do to answer this very important question, I'm going to put something in for the caption. 
And then I'm going to look at the cipher that is generated. So let's put caption of test. So if I go to, ooh, ooh, there we go. And there's a little hamburger menu. That's what it does. It makes the thing bigger. So if I click and download export, do I have an option for cipher? So, okay, I think the label, by well, looks of things, the, the label is just making it user-friendly for us. So I'm just clicking here, you see download export. I'm looking at the cipher and I'm gonna click on the create statement. And you can see there's no mention of test. So I put in a label, uh, sorry, a caption of test and you can see it doesn't appear anywhere in the cipher query. So I believe that's just uh, an aid to help us see what's going on. So I will get that double checked, but it looks like it's an aid. So I'll have a quick look in the JSON. It's, uh, this is just giving us a bunch of properties if we wanted to replicate that. So yeah, okay, there we go. Nothing with respect to notes of, that's just an aid to help pretty up our diagram. So cool, that is good to know. So this is our data model. So this is probably what you would use this is probably what you would use with regards to um, if we were doing a data model. So one thing to bear in mind that when we put data into Neo4j, because Neo4j is sort of schema on right, you never declare your data model ahead of time. So you basically, the data model kind of gets, your schema gets generated as you're putting in data. So where it would make sense to use caption is if we were, creating something. So here, the, this, the test would be like our rolled up, our rolled up um, sort of grouping names or like, you know, character or something like that, I suspect, whereas we start putting in some physical data. So I suspect that's what the intention is there. So we've, we've tried the caption. So caption doesn't actually put any data in. So we know about that. So let's get rid of that. So we've got a character and we've got planet. So we're going to start putting some data in. So we have some questions that's come up. So, uh, yep, just like a comment. Yep, I think that's a fair statement. So captions like a comment. And what, what we've got Kevin here. So let's just pop this question up. Uh, Jason's exports into the privacy mode. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I, I think that's fair. So we can maybe have a go at pulling that out and having a play later, but yes. Effectively, we're getting all of the properties about that node there in the JSON. So let's go back up here and have a look. So we're getting everything here. We're getting the style, the border, the colors. So we're getting all of the information there. Yep, so indeed, Kevin, that's the, the there. So that's really powerful if you want to recreate that somewhere else. Okay, right, so. It looks like I'm going to be crowdsourcing some Star Wars characters. So uh, Create the Imaginable has very kindly uh, told me that Luke Skywalker is from Tatooine. So let's do this. So let's let's start putting some stuff in here. So let's add a property. So we're going to have a property which is going to be uh, name. I think it'll be Luke Skywalker. So where was? I'm trying to remember where Anakin Skywalker's from. And you're going to all laugh because I'm trying to remember from the Weird Al Yankovic song, The Saga Begins, which is a, a parody of American Pie. I can't spell today. So apart from that, everything's going extraordinarily well. Okay, so, ooh, so if you press enter, it allows you to put in lots of extra properties. So if I click off, okay, so that's the one thing to bear in mind is it will leave it blank. So I don't know if anyone knows what Luke Skywalker's date of birth is, we can stick that in as well. Anyway, okay, so we've got Luke Skywalker, character. Here's from Planet Tatooine. So let's add a property. Name, that's going to be Tatooine. And let's see who else can we find. Actually, if I, I'm going back to the Star Wars data bank and I believe we have locations. I'm going to go dig out Tatooine and see who else comes from Tatooine. And. Oh, we have a nice thing which says affiliations. Climate hot, apparently. 
Oh, it doesn't say Luke Skywalker for affiliations. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, but apparently um, the Hut Clan are on there. Darth Vader is also. Yes, Anakin Skywalker. Um, yeah, Anakin Skywalker. Oh, let's do this. We can have a bit of fun with this, can't we? So let's let's do another node. Planet type. Yeah, I like your thinking there, Kevin. Let's do that. So let's do a type. Baron. Yeah, let's do this. Why not? I like it. I like the thinking there. All right. So, oh, OK. Got a bit of funny thing going there, but we can see little dots coming in to help us. So let's do let's let's have a test of the reverse the relationship. So we know we've also got we have got Anakin. I will oh no, what should be character? Oh, and this is where we can have fun because we can have put the aliases in as well, can't we? Because we've got um so obviously Anakin Skywalker becomes Star Vader. We have Emperor Palpatine, who was, I've forgotten his name, the bad one. Uh, I, I suspect my husband's shaking his head in disbelief at how quickly I've forgotten all of this stuff. Okay, so we have got name Anakin. He's also from Tatooine. And this is where we have an interesting thing, because we can do stuff like this now, can't we? Can have a nose relationship. Oh, look at this. We're gonna, gonna, having a nice bit of fun with this, aren't we? Um, da, da, da. How do we want to do this? Oh, let's do it like this. I know this is not necessarily the, the most proper way of doing this. We can refactor this later if we're that way inclined. But we can do something like this, like relationship. That's going to be sun. And let's bring up another character from our right. Who else we're going to bring up? Locations: Tatooine. Affiliation: Jedi Order. Oh, we can have so much fun with this. So I guess what we can do as well is. We could have another character node. Let's try it. Let's try the self-referencing. So if we do this, oh, look at this. Look, so this is one thing you couldn't do really well in, uh, in Old Arrow. So let me give you an example. So if I did, if I wanted to self-reference on this node, do you see it does this? You have this horrible sort of line go through itself. So here we can do the self-reference. So we can say what we could do. OK, we can do self-reference. This one we're probably going to get rid of because it doesn't really make sense here. So let's try to delete this relationship. So how do we delete relationships? Uh-oh. Maybe we can't. We might have to put this down onto the question. Is Princess Leia also from Tatooine? I think, isn't she from somewhere else? I can't remember the name of the planet. Uh, OK, right. So I'm going to go off and ask because I can't see how we can remove this arrow. So if I do this one, how do I? I can duplicate it. I can remove Burst it. Thank you very much. I will add that information about Princess Leia in a second. Oh. That's interesting. I'm not sure how to. Right, I'm going to ask how we actually delete stuff, because that's one thing I'm not sure about. Because here, to remove a node, all you needed to do was double click on a node and just hit the delete button. But I don't see a delete button here. So 
I'm going to ask about that. Right, okay, let's pin some more characters. I do, otherwise, we're not going to have any. Oh, is there a delete? Good point. Yes, Kevin is completely correct. You press the delete key and it will delete that relationship. Good thinking there. I love it. Nice problem solving. Okay, so we also know. If we do, I'm being fun with this. So let's do AKA, also known as character properties name of Vader and then we can do the, the assumption around the relationships. So we're not going to return it back. Okay, so we have got another. One, so let's do another character. We're going to do Princess Leia. So let's do. We're going to put do we put we'll put Han Solo in for the last one, and then we're going to have a play with tailoring this and and making it look pretty so that we've we've had the experience. So let's put in character. Put some properties. So we're going to say name. Oh, this is a great, Princess Lee is a great one. She's connected all over the place, isn't she? So name, and it's going to be Princess Leia. Got character. So she is. Uh, Oh, I've done the wrong relationship here. That's okay. We can do father. Same thing here, can't we? We can do nose. Father. All right, bit of fun going on here. And then we've got... Oh, let's add, let's add the planet and Han Solo, and then we are good, and we're going to have a little play with getting this looking pretty. Okay, so we have got label. Now we're going to put in planet. And we're going to put in name, and that is Alderan And Leia is from planet. Got to double click. Excellent. It's interesting that the sizing works in different ways. So we'll have a little thing with that afterwards. So also this we're going to reverse the relationship, and that's going to be from planet. And we've got to do hand solo, and we are good to go. And we can try and make this all look lovely. So, add a node, it's going to be what character is And we can put in some properties, that's going to be name, and solo. Type terrestrial. Oh, you're adding for the um, the planet or yeah we can do that you might want to give a spoiler warning I, I, you know what I, I think how many years has it been since episode one came out wasn't that in 2000 and one or something or 99 I mean I think we're on safe ground here. If it's been 21 years, I think we're safe. I think we're good, but very considerate of you. Ah, uh, sorry, that was about spoilers. Give, giving away the plot. Actually, no, no, original Star Wars. Original Star Wars. That wasn't. Oh my god, that was like in the 70s when it came out. I'm going to tell you something all that's going to shock you to your cause. 
I didn't see Star Wars until around 2010 or something. Never got round to it. Never got round to it. Okay, so we have got Han Solo. We need to give him a planet, which uh, Corellia sounds very Italian, doesn't it? So let's give Han Solo a planet. What is Corellia like? The summer year, Earth like? I don't know. Okay, right, so he is from this planet. So let's put in the that from planet. And, you know, because we're giving away all of the spoilers, all of the spoilers, married, weren't they? All right, cool. There right, we go. Look at this. You've got a beautiful connected graph here. So, yes, yeah, so the original original Star Wars, A New Hope, came out in 1977. 1977 is insane. Oh, right. Okay, cool. So here's our graph. So let's have a little play with just getting it pretty and getting it set up and whatever else. So I don't think you notice, you see we've got these little red, the red dash dots. So that's helping us to line it. So that's really handy. So we've kind of got, I'm trying to figure out who's the centre. So basically Anakin's the centre of the universe. But Star Wars is all about Anakin. Who cares about this Luke chap? It's like Anakin, centre of the universe. So what I really like is you can see this cute sort of circle coming around, which is really handy, just lining things up. So let's do this. So I'm just going to have a play with getting things lined up. So I guess we can do this because Anakin's kind of like the, the centre of the universe. So we'll do this. So we've got Princess Leia. And then maybe if we do Han Solo here. There we go. And he comes from a different planet. And... We said that Luke and so let's do this. And I guess the thing is as well is obviously Luke will know. Leah, you know, they're siblings. But okay, so they're from the same planet. All right, so that's really cool. So that's what we've had to play. So straight away, a really helpful feature here is that it's very easy for us to line up the nodes. So that's really, really cool. That's super useful. So great, we've got that, we've had a play. It was pretty straightforward to put the data in. So that was really, really handy. So there's less clicking, the fact that we can press enter. Uh, I will mention about the delete thing because I, I guess it didn't dawn on me to press the delete key. So I think I'll, I'll mention that about that. So we'll make sure that's documented up somewhere so that is clear. So that's cool. It, easy to reverse, easy to modify it. So let's have a little play at making this pretty. So first thing I want to do is change some of the sizes of the text on the relationship. So I believe what we can do is, can we do a multi-select? Yep. So what you can do if you want to multi-select the relationships, Press and hold the control key if you're on Windows. I believe it's the command key if you're on a Mac. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to make all of my relationship fonts just a little bit smaller. Apart from this one, which I'm going to make a little bit bigger. There you go. So press control and like that, I've selected all of the relationship relationships that we've currently got on the diagram. So let's have a little play with the style. Oh, it even tells me that I've selected relationships. So let's do that. And what I can do is, let's just adjust this. So there you go. So like this, all of them get changed at the same time. So that's wonderful. So there we go. And I think we can do the same job with the properties as well. So we can change those down to 27. So what's really nice here is the fact that we can independently change the size of the relationship type as well as the relationship property. So that's nice. I really like that. That's quite handy. And we can change the colors. We can change the positions as well. So if we want it inside, 
that side. Okay, it doesn't make a difference here. I think that's probably more to do with the nodes rather than the, the relationships. But okay, so we can do this and we can have a play and we can change the property color. So there we go. If you want to make something a bit specific, we can do that. And I believe, so that's changing them all at the same time. If we wanted to say, well, actually, we want a different property color if the relationship is spouse. So I've now just selected that one and I can now change it. So there we go. So you have the choice. Either all of them have the same color and we use the control key if you're on Windows, the command key if you're on a Mac to go and select the things we wanted to change. And we can have them independent as well. So that's really nice. You can see how powerful this is going to be for updating stuff. Right, so what we're gonna do as well, I would like to be, oh, so just quick thing that create the imaginable, I would like to be able to right click to delete. Yeah, I will pass that on. I will definitely pass that feedback on. I agree. It's, it's, it's one of those funny things that if you're doing a lot of like the modeling and things, then delete that's the shortcut you're going to do but i think until you're you're there then sometimes it's helpful to have that little sort of delete button or a right click and delete or when you click and it pops up with delete so no absolutely i will pass that on okay so we can do that so that's great fun so i think we can do a very similar thing with the relationship so let's pick from planet let's pick all the from planet relationships uh, pick all those lovely and we can, for example, change the arrow color. So let's do that. Let's make it greenish color. There we go. And we can make it bigger as well. So if we want like some massive arrows for planet, we can do that. So we get an idea here. We've got all of these nice customizable options available to us. So let's have a little play with the nodes as well. Let's see what happens. So let's select all the planet nodes. Why not? So same idea. I'm going to, oh, this is exciting. So let's select all the planet nodes and we are going to have a play and customize those. So we've got the three nodes selected. It tells us that that's really handy to make sure we've picked them up. And let's do some styling. And a nice thing here that I like, I'm just going to mention quickly. So notice we clicked all of the planets. Now, if we wanted to rename it to something else, like, I don't know, planets. The fact that now we can do all of them at the same time, look at that, that's really handy. The fact that you can update all of your nodes immediately when you've selected them, if you decide you want to change the label name to something more appropriate. So that's super cool, that's really handy. And let's see what we wanna do. So we can play with the border color, we can play with the label color. We can, let's see what happens when we move the label around. So if I do the label inside, presumably, there you go. So if you want the label inside the node, we have that option. Here it's teeny tiny, but for certain situations, if you've got a few nodes, it probably makes sense. There we go. So we've got a bit of fun with regards to the styling there. And I we can have a play with changing the background color. So let's do that. Let's change all the planet colors to a nice green. Oh, that looks terrible. So that's the label color. I'm taking that back. And so you can get the customized node labels. We can customize the board color. I want to customize the, the node color. That's what I want, that green. There you go. Brilliant. So we can have a play with that. So let's see what we've got. So we have got um, from Necra, an auto range would be nice or a sticky effect when moving a connected node like in browser. I will feed that back. So I think yeah, we can move it. So there you go. It's not moving around. And I think if I do this, there you go. It's kind of sticking around, but I guess um, maybe we, get, we can have a chat to see if that's not quite meeting what you would like. Right, so okay, we can have a play with that. And we have, so there we go. We're pretty much happy with that. Now, there was mention of different layout modes. So let's have a quick play. And what we've got here, so uh, Creates mentioned Baby Yoda is from an unknown home planet. Yes, we, we haven't watched The Mandalorian yet. I've been told it's very good. I'm sure that's going to be on the to watch list somewhere. I got PGN. I can download stuff. That's cool. Right, so uh, what have we got here? Transparent background. Oh, look at this. You can pick transparent backgrounds as well. And different resolutions. That's very considerate. I like that. 
Mm. Oh, look at that. So you've got a unique link as well. So what we can do, let's copy this link and that's nice. That's really, really nice. So let me, so, okay. So you can give a link to people to share. So that's really handy. Ah, so, okay, so Netflix is saying when you move the parent node around, the connected children should move around with it. Okay, I will mention that. I will pass that on. In fact, for those of you who are playing along at the same time with me and having a look, you do have a feedback button here. So please do, if you, if some, if you come up with some thoughts or something you want to share, you can feed it back here. So do please do if you spot something, um, do pop it on there. Okay, so we had we did have a option, didn't we, to change the layout? So let me just see where that is. And I think we're pretty much done. I think this is very cool. So we saw the export option. So just quickly here, we, if we wanted to recreate this data, we can take all of this up. Copy into clipboard and just paste, or you can run it in the FJ browser if you've got the FJ desktop up and running. So you have those options as well. And what's interesting as well is we have some options here. So we've got a match. So what this is going to do is if we already had, for argument's sake, we had the entire Star Wars universe in the database, and maybe Popular request, if you would like me to do a Twitch session where we go away and pull all the Star Wars universe and pop it into a database, we can do that. Let me know. So let me know on Twitter. If it's popular, we will do a session on Star Wars. I, I will do this. And so let's if we had the entire universe of the of the Star Wars of the Star Wars universe in our database, then what this would do is we could draw up in in uh, arrows well i want this particular pattern and then you can use this query to then go and pull that data out of the database so that's what the match option is going to do we can create this data so we can say well actually i don't have this data already in my database so this then gives you the query that's required to create these nodes and then we've got a third option here which is merge and what merge will do so for those of you who have not come across merge before what merge does is it goes away and takes that pattern. So example here, we have a pattern of uh, Luke Skywalker Walker from planet Tatooine to uh, from planet. Uh, so Anakin knows relationships. So basically, it's taking that triangle and I'll, I'll point at that triangle in a bit. And it will then if that pattern doesn't exist, it will go off and create it. If that pattern already exists, then it will go away and uh, basically um, bring it back. So that's what it does. So my Twitter handle, I'll pop that in the chat. Now, so, uh, so that's what's going on there. Okay, so we have those options. That's great fun. So let's see what we've got. So now Chris just asked, how did we select all of the nodes? Right, I'll quickly show you that. That's super easy. So we have our magic control key. So if you're on Windows, it's the control key. If you're on Mac, it's the command key. So you press the uh, press the uh, control key or the command key, and then you just click and select your nodes. And you can see here the numbers increasing as I select my nodes. So we know how many we've picked up there. And then from there, you can edit and pick your style. So let's, for example, change the label color and let's change it to red. There we go. Let's change all of the labels to red. So that's how you do it, Necro. And OK, so you can save this to Google Drive as well. I'm going to leave that. I'm, going to, I, I, I'm sure it works beautifully. And OK, so we had another question, which was I tried to type the URL and Indeed, no access. It is stored local. Oh, cool. So it's. I assume you're saying it's it's working. Wonderful. Excellent. Wonderful. Wonderful. Right. Okay. So that's kind of it. We've had a play. It works beautifully. So this bit here, it says save to browser storage. So what that means is it's going to keep that in the local cache. You know, all, all your browsers have like a little magical cache where it stores things like your cookies and whatever else. 
it'll also store some other bits of data as well. So what will happen is, is if I re refresh this, <clears throat> I don't lose it, it's still there. If I do this, it's still there. So that's it's just persisting there in local storage. But you can also save it to Google Drive and you have all that fun stuff there. So, oh, look at this. I can do a new one, so I can create a new chart. So that's new. So that's a really another cool thing as well with arrows. So back in, in with old arrows, this is also stored in browser storage. And you can't create a new arrow. So the only way you could create a new arrows diagram was to like run in incognito mode or in private no mode, whatever version of the browser that you've got. So with the new one, what you can do is create a new graph. So I can go here and I can create a new one in browser storage and I can do stuff. Let's just do hello. There we go. And I can go back to my old role and go back to my old graph, I hope. So if I go open, so I should probably name my graph something a bit more useful than untitled graph. So let's name this one untitled graph two. So we can differentiate. And I can go back to untitled graph. There we go. Untitled graph. There you go. So that's really cool. So that's that that is a super useful feature to be able to use, as well as having the option around storing it to Google Drive. And let's see what the import button does. So import. Oh, OK, that's fair enough. So there we go. That's what we do with our JSON file. So it, again, if, if there is interest, I can copy the JSON file that we've generated and pop it. And then what you can do is take that JSON file and have your own mini Star Wars graph chart with funky colors. So there you go. So that's what we do with the JSON there. The mystery has been solved. OK, so we're coming towards the end of the hour. So if you've got any questions, drop them in the chat now. We'll cover them. Otherwise, if you've got any questions uh, around this, you've got the community forum. So I've got a funky button for that. Hang on. Let me bring up the funky button. So if you've got any questions about arrows, so either if you've got any feedback, please click on the feedback button that we saw at the we, we saw here at the bottom. If you've got sort of general questions about arrows, there will be an option in the forum. So you've got the forum address there on the screen. So that's community.nearforj.com. So pop any questions there that you may have. So if you've got any additional questions about this session now, drop them in the chat. We'll, we'll cover them. Otherwise, I will let you have fun with the new arrows tool. So let me see the how we got a sensible way for me to dump the dump the three oh, i'll leave it for now I'm, I'm sure we can find a copy of that so wonderful uh post the model on twitter or on blog okay i will do that so give me so again i'm on twitter at el lazelle so after we've finished give me a couple of modes to figure out how i'm going to stick the json object in a tweet <laughs> So I'll have it in a tweet. I'll tweet that out. So you can have a go with the import function. So bearing in mind, so you go to arrows.app, we pick a picture of the arrow, we click on that, we have an import. So this is where you're going to post your JSON. So I will do that. I'll share the link. I will share the link. Good thinking there, Necra. I will share the link and we will do that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your kind feedback, Twitch Biz Coach. I'm really glad to help. So again, I, I love it. I, I think graphs are actually great fun and it's great. If there's something I can do to help you with your graph journeys, do let me know. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say, I did mention this earlier, so I'm going to say it again. We are going to do something a bit fun. We're going to do something fun. Yeah, don't worry, uh, Necro. I will post the chair link. So you can retweet me and let me know if that link works or not. So yes, it's good. I like this. We're going to do testing by Twitter. Uh, this is great fun. I love this as an experiment. So I'm going to do some fun. So I did crowdsource from you. So thank you very much about what you'd like to cover with load CSV. So we're going to start doing that soon. And I'm thinking I might do a bit of a like a pub quiz element to it as well. So we'll do a session with a pub quiz and then some explanations. So we'll have a bit of fun with that. So I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to that. So apart from that, Thank you very much for joining me today. Have fun with the arrow. So again, if you've got any feedback to the arrow tool, please, please, please click the feedback on the arrows page. The people working at really appreciate any comments you've got on that. I will post the share link on Twitter shortly after this. 
And apart from that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next week. Have a good one.